Hello everyone, this is Ijaz Khan and in today's video we will be discussing Porter Diamond. But before we discuss Porter Diamond, let's first go through the strategic planning model proposed by Johnson, Scholes and Whittington. According to the strategic planning model, a company when it is formulating a strategy for its organization has to go through three steps. The first step is to analyze its strategic position against the environment it's operating in. The second step is to identify strategic choices that will take this organization from its current strategic position to the desired strategic position. And then once a strategy or strategies are chosen, the next step will be to implement those strategies and put those strategies into action successfully. When we say strategic position or when we talk about analyzing the strategic position of the company, we mean the internal analysis and the external analysis. Internal analysis means looking at the organization from, its, from inside and look at its strengths and weaknesses, the things that it does better than its competitors or the things that it does worse than its competitors. And when we say external analysis, we mean micro or industry analysis, that is the market analysis in which the company is operating in, and the macro level analysis, that is the economic conditions that it is confronted with. So the first step is analyzing the strategic position of the company, and uh, when we are analyzing it from external point of view, we've got two models for analyzing the macro level environment one is the pest analysis which we have already discussed in our previous video and the other is the porter diamond which we are going to discuss in uh, this video porter diamond is basically about the factors that give one nation a competitive advantage over the other according to porter a nation gets competitive advantage not only because of its inherited resources, natural resources, but because of created conditions of factors which will give competitive advantage to one nation over the other. So the Porter Diamond basically discusses those factors that will help any government to create competitive advantage for its nation over the others. What those factors are the first is the factor conditions, the firm structure, strategy and rivalry, demand conditions, related and support industries, the government itself and the chances. And all of these are in some way or the other connected to each other. And let's first discuss them one by one and see how these factors give competitive advantage to one nation over the other. So the factor conditions are basically the natural resources that a nation has access to, the capital, and the human resource. So when we talk about factor conditions, there will be basically two levels of factor con factors the basic ones and the advanced ones. The basic ones are the natural resources inherited by any nation and the unskilled labor. According to Porter, these factors do not give competitive advantage to a nation because these can be obtained by anyone else by investing money. What, what give competitive advantage to one nation or the other are the skilled labor and access to specialized capital. So if any nation has easy access to skilled labor, will be able to compete in the international markets as their cost of input will be lower and they will be having easy access to the skilled labor. Like if you talk about the German car industry, the German car industry or any manufacturer from Germany can easily compete in any international market because they have got access to top quality engineers within the Germany which were produced from top universities operating in Germany. Since they have access to this high, highly skilled labor, 
they are in a better position to compete in any international market. Similarly, if any nation and any competitor or any local organization has access to specialized capital, it will be in a better position to enter international markets where they have to enter capital intensive markets. For example, if an airline company is about to enter into any international market, as we know that airline industry is a highly capital intensive industry. And if this investor or look, this company has easy access in its local market to the capital, it will be in a better position to compete the international competitors. Then comes the firm's strategy, structure and rivalry. When we say strategy, we mean the way the home competitors compete with each other. For example, if the, in the home market, the competitors compete by following a cost leadership strategy, it will mean that they will gain the expertise of reducing their costs and producing low-cost products. So if over a period of time they have gained this capability because they, the, all of the competitors in the market were, were applying the same cost leadership strategy, then they will have gained the skill to produce low-cost products and they will have more chance to compete in international markets where the products are price sensitive. The corporate structure, again, it's, it's, it's a very important factor for the local companies to gain competitive advantage over the international competitors. If they have got good corporate structures, good hierarchies, and good internal control system and performance measurement systems, they will be in a better position to compete in the, in the international markets as they will have good performance measurement systems. They will, they will be in a better position to control the organization, uh, even if it's uh, expanding into new markets, and uh, it will help them compete in that market with their strong corporate structures. Similarly, if, if the local market has got intense rivalry, and the competitors are involved in intense rivalry, it will continuously push these competitors to innovate so that they can stay in the market, they can, they can stay relevant in the market, they can grow in the market, and over a period of time, they, they will be able to build dynamic capabilities, and this will help them compete in the international markets as well. Demand conditions. When we talk about demand conditions, it may be the size of the mar local market or it may be the sophisticated demand that exists in that particular market. So let's first discuss the size of the market. Now, if the market in the local market has a tendency to saturate early, it will continuously push the suppliers to produce m new products and come up with new innovative features so that they can stay relevant in the market because if the market gets saturated early, it means that they will have to produce new products. So, but by doing so, they will be able to build the dynamic capabilities that will eventually help them compete in international markets with new products. And if this, the local market has a sophisticated demand, like if you talk about the German automobile market, the customers there, they, they, uh, they, they have a very sophisticated demand as they have or easy access to luxurious cars and they will only be attracted uh, if they get a new car which is much improved one, much improved than the ones already in the market since the automobile industry in the germany has already achieved uh, state of art technologies and they are already producing very high standard cars so to satisfy those customers they will have to come up with something better than the existing uh, cars so for these com companies who have, who have got a sophisticated customer demand, will, it will be too easy for them to enter into international markets where there will be relatively less sophisticated demand existing. So they will be in a better position to compete in those markets.
in order to gain a competitive advantage for any organization they need to have access to support and related industries for example if, if, if a local manufacturer a manufacturer who manufactures uh, electronic devices like uh, cell phones they will need operating systems that is software so if they have got local suppliers who can produce those softwares or operating systems for them they will be in a better position to compete in the international market as they will have more economic access to these support services but if they have to rely on any international supplier to provide them with this uh, access to software operating system then they will have less chance to compete in the international markets so it's very important for any nation to get competitive advantage over the others if to have better related and support industries The government policies, they, they also play a vital role in giving competitive advantage to one nation over the other. The government policies can affect the demand conditions. They can create demand conditions which will push the local competitors to raise their standard and reach to a level where they will be easily competing in the international markets. And this can be done, for example, if uh, a government announces um, like like in Pakistan, we've recently seen that the government has announced a 5 million houses project. Now, this will create a demand for the houses and it will allow the competitor, local competitors to compete in this market and increase their quality. And once they will be through this, these projects, they will be in a better position to compete in the international market as they will have enough experience of producing um, uh, these houses. Related in support industries, the government will always have the role of creating support industries. For example, if, they, if the government wants to increase the competitive advantage of local dev electronic device manufacturers they may they may support software houses they may give subsidies to, to software houses they may give uh, tax reliefs to, to to support these software houses so that they gain the abilities to produce software that can be used on those in those uh, electronic devices and they will also have their role to play in creating factory conditions like they, they, they may set up um, universities that will produce um, IT specialists that will produce engineers that will produce doctors so, so uh, the government will be playing a vital role in developing skilled labor that can be used in other industries to gain competitive advantages last is the chances according to porter there will be certain factors that will be beyond the control of any government or uh, the uh, the organizations but those factors will have a vital role in giving competitive advantage to one nation over the other like for example if an if a country is hit by energy crisis it will push electronic device manufacturers to produce energy efficient devices and if they get this skill of producing energy efficient devices they will be able to compete in the international markets where the demand for such products will be high as they will have already gained the skill of doing so so there, the chances will also have an important role according to Porter in giving competitive advantage to one nation over the other Thank you for watching Easy Study.